Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. It's Ed Rosenberg again, and this morning I'm with Keith from Payability. Keith, how are you doing this morning? Doing quite well. Good to see you. Okay, Keith. I actually came across your service. I actually got an email. I I think I'm signed up as an Amazon vendor, an Amazon seller, and it struck me as a great idea. So that's why I reached out to you, and here we are talking about it. So first of all, tell me a little bit about your background, and then if you can tell me what can Payability do for an online seller, please. Yeah, absolutely. So I, uh, I started my career actually in the finance world. I um, start, uh, was early on was uh, was providing technology services specific to the mortgage industry. Then ended up uh, starting a number of different companies, venture backed companies, uh, primarily in ad tech, but in a, a number of different internet related uh, um, sectors. And and so uh, for me, payability being a fintech company, being a specialty finance type of company, uh, really came full circle because it brought together technology, brought together finance, and certainly uh, um, from a uh, just just internet marketing uh, perspective, it brought that piece together as well. So it's been super interesting for me from a personal perspective and, and very rewarding. Right. So exactly, what does payability do for an online seller? So, uh, so what we do is we help, specific to, to Amazon sellers and vendors, what we do is we help provide them with operating capital so that they can grow their business faster. So we, uh, specifically what we do is we accelerate the, uh, the, the revenue that they have generated but have not yet been paid out, and we turn that into cash, provide them with those, uh, with those earnings in cash, uh, either on a weekly basis or uh, for uh, sellers in certain instances on a daily basis. And so rather than if you're a vendor having to wait 60 days uh, to get paid by Amazon, you can now get paid on a weekly basis uh, by, by payability and accelerate those, uh, those revenues and turn them into cash. Or if you're a seller, you can even turn them into uh, daily uh, uh, cash. So rather than waiting two weeks to get paid by Amazon, now you can actually have access to your, uh, your sales next day. Uh, and of course, all of that turns out to be just you know, creating a better positive cash flow, uh, allowing sellers and vendors to be able to sleep better at night, but most importantly, allowing them to be able to buy more inventory and grow their business faster. Right, so that really interests me when you say that instead of getting paid by Amazon every two weeks, I would get paid essentially every day. Now, how does that work? Amazon would pay you instead of me, and you would advance me the money? Like, how would that work? Well, let's say I'm expecting a $100,000 settlement. How would that work? Yeah, you, you nailed it. So, uh, and, and it's a bit different for sellers than it is for vendors, obviously, because vendors are getting paid typically uh, 30, 60, or 90 days. I think most, most typically 60 days after uh, an invoice becomes approved, whereas sellers are typically being paid two weeks uh, after, uh, after they have a sale or every two weeks. And so, uh, so we have, we have historically our, our product and our offering has been a very good solution for vendors. So I'll talk about that first uh, and then talk about a beta program that we have for, for sellers right now. So, so for, for vendors, what we do is we, uh, each week we look at any new approved invoices that have been approved by Amazon in their, uh, in their vendor central or vendor express account for the last, uh, for the last week. And then we pay out 80% of that value to the right directly into the bank account of the uh, of the vendor, uh, hold back 20%, and then when Amazon makes their payment and they pay into a, a pass through account that we control, so they're making a, effectively a payment directly to payability, then we release the remainder of that of that 20%, and that allows us to be able to have you know deal with things like co-op charges, etc. That might come through in that in that period of time. Uh, so in the ultimate uh, solution then ends up becoming just a much faster uh, source of capital, a much faster way to be able to turn your sales into cash. Uh, and at the same time, what's interesting about it, and we hear this from vendors all the time, is that they also really like the fact that they aren't actually writing a check or, or making payment back to us. They don't have to make loan payments. Uh, they don't have to make daily loan payments, et cetera. Uh, it effectively is, is Amazon making payment to us, uh, but we are accelerating those payments and paying before we even get paid then to the vendor to make sure that they have that cash flow. Right. Now, with a vendor, you know pretty much, besides the co-op fees, which I'm aware of, you know pretty much how much they're getting because it was shipped, they were invoiced. When you're dealing with a seller, you don't really know the future. So how does that work? You, you anticipate based on past revenue? It's still based on, on, on sales that you have already made, uh, um, but because sellers are typically getting paid every two weeks, then what we will do is we will see the, the sales that they have, uh, that they made in the prior day, and then we will accelerate the, 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 the cash 
uh, um, or turn those those sales into cash for them and make those uh, make those earnings available in their payability account. So so for sellers, it's a, it's a different product for us, and it's one that's currently in beta. So we're currently testing it out. We're getting great response from the market so far. So we're excited about about iterating on it and, and continuing to scale it. But the idea is that it, it's called it's a product called Instant Access, and so for a seller. Uh, you sign up much the same way you do as a vendor. Uh, you connect your, uh, your Amazon account uh, to payability much in the same way that you do with a, uh, as a vendor, but then you are getting, uh, you're getting access to those sales on a daily basis. So it really speeds up the cycle. And from a pricing perspective, we can dive into that a little bit later, but it's a very interesting and, and very, very competitive from a pricing perspective. So it creates this really interesting, very low cost, but very rapid and flexible uh, financing source for, for Amazon sellers. You're basically turning Amazon into PayPal. <laughs> that, you know, it's, it's interesting because they, you have this this massive platform, and there's and Amazon's not the only one, but Amazon is obviously the you know the the, the leader uh, when it comes to kind of this area. Um, but effectively, what they're yeah what they're doing is they are borrowing money from all of their third party sellers and borrowing money from all of their vendors uh, in order to be able to finance their supply chain. And so what we are doing is we're filling that gap because as small medium businesses, it is tough. To provide financing to Amazon, but that's effectively what you're doing when you're a third-party seller waiting for two weeks to get paid, or when you're an Amazon vendor waiting 60 days to get paid, you're loaning Amazon money. And so, uh, and, and Amazon has a great balance sheet, they have plenty of, uh, of cash on their balance sheet, but that is how retailers have historically worked with, with vendors and sellers. So we fill in that gap there, provide that, that cash flow need to the, to the seller as well as to the vendor to make sure that they can scale and grow their business. All right, so they have, they have, we have Amazon lending, you have Cabbage, you have the SBA offering loans. Where does payability stand as far as rates are concerned? So let's talk about uh, our, our instant access product specifically for third-party sellers. So uh, the way that, uh, that, that that is structured is that uh, it is a, a simple rate of 1%. So of the, uh, of, of the sales that you do and the flow, uh, flow through, uh, through the payability system, you're paying 1%. And that shows up the next day, as I mentioned, into your payability account. Once those funds are there, then you have you can access them in a couple of different ways. One way is that you can just download download those funds right directly into your bank account, in which case there's no additional fee at all. Um, or you can actually put them onto a credit card. So a number of our sellers are telling us, hey, you know, we actually make our payments to our vendors and or to our uh, you know our sources of inventory with credit card, and so we'd like to be able to get paid directly onto or or have access to funds on a credit card. So we actually take those funds and you can alternatively put them right onto a prepaid or pre-funded MasterCard that is provided by Payability. What's interesting about that is that in that case, when you spend those funds, you actually get a rebate of 1%. And Great. so, yeah, so if you end up, that's, and that's the rebate that we pay back to, to those sellers. So that if as a seller, you are, uh, you are spending a significant portion or, or, uh, or all of those, those sales on, um, and you can spend that, those funds on a credit card, but effectively our solution can be free for you. Uh, if, uh, if you're spending half of your funds on, on a MasterCard, uh, or you can spend them through a MasterCard, then it's going to reduce the, the, the price by, by half. But even without any of the rebate, any of, without uh, the the, uh, the pre-funded card, it's only one percent. So it it, uh, it it compares very very favorably to a loan from Cabbage, a high high interest uh, loan from Cabbage, or any of these other sources. So one percent. So so if I'm doing five thousand dollars, I see what you're saying about the previous history. So in other words, if I did five thousand dollars of sales, it would be five thousand dollars would be advanced to me less, and it would only be a one percent fee on that. That's right. So just uh, it'd be five thousand dollars advanced to you, less one percent. Um, currently, we uh, also with instant access, we're advancing eighty percent of the funds, holding back twenty percent in case there's any uh, any chargebacks, returns, etc. Um, we are looking to increase that percentage over time uh, as we get more and more comfortable with the platform, and uh, also with the kind of the specific behavior and and, and historical uh, um, kind of performance of any particular third party seller with with Amazon, that we can increase that. But yeah, that's uh, that's the idea is that you are getting getting access to those funds next day, only paying one percent at the max, uh, and certainly with the rebate, if you're spending funds on a Mastercard, then you can uh, you can bring that that price down pretty significantly as well. And what happens if the guy, he, uh, you know, I mean, that's like worst case scenario, but if the guy gets suspended, then yeah, I mean that's that's part of the the, the risk of that that we take. Of course, the the idea is that uh, that that we are advancing capital based on sales that have already happened. 
And so, uh, so our view of that is that, that that should be money that is already earned by the, the seller uh, or by the vendor. And so we are providing them access to their to the funds uh, that Amazon is otherwise uh, you know, holding on to uh, and, and not paying out immediately. So that's it, it's from a risk perspective, it is it's lower risk uh, uh, for us, uh, but it's also highly flexible and very inexpensive and, and super simple to be able to utilize as well for both third party sellers as well. Right. We could talk about it offline, but there are also like situations where somebody, I deal a lot with seller suspensions, unfortunately. Yep. And a lot of times people get suspended and the money is there. Amazon said that within 90 days, they're definitely going to get it, whether they get reinstated or not. And, you know, but those people sometimes, and then it's 90 days and, and I hit you, you know, blindsided. So that may be a good space for you to get into. People are desperate for the money. And the money is secure. It's just they need it just to roll over. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a great point, and, and it's interesting too because we saw a lot of that in in some of the other verticals that we, that we also service. So, so the other two areas, broadly speaking, besides e-commerce, that that where where we have uh, good inroads. Uh, one is with advertising, digital advertising in particular, uh, and it's a very similar kind of structure there, where you have these digital marketplaces that are uh, that are basically buying ad inventory from these uh, various publishers and then paying them out 30, 60, or 90 days later. And so it's a very similar kind of flow. Uh, and then the other is with app developers that are, are monetizing their apps through app stores. So the primary app stores, of course, being Google and, and iTunes, but then there's also a, a lot of other uh, gaming specific kind of app stores, et cetera. And so we service those folks. And in all three of those categories, there's a similar uh, uh, kind of scenario to what you're talking about where a, a supplier can get suspended by the marketplace. It's a very, you know, variety of rules. So part of our approach is certainly one, it's a technology approach. So we are a FinTech company. We're using finance and technology and merging the two of them together. So, so it's a heavily, uh, you know, platform technology approach. Uh, but it's also, we have to be very specific to each platform and to the nuances of each platform. To your point, there are, there are potential risks and potential, you know, challenges and we need to, and that's what we do when we open up a new, a new vertical is we get to know the, the sellers and the suppliers and the vendors in that category, and then certainly try to understand the nuances of the platform as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, Keith, um, that was very interesting. Uh, anything else you want to add before we go? I don't think so. I think uh, you know it, it's a uh, it, it's an interesting time. I think generally speaking, so forget you know payability and financing, etc. Just an interesting time for digital marketplaces and for the suppliers of those digital marketplaces. And with e-commerce, it's it's uh, you know as as interesting as any other vertical out there. Certainly, just because of what Amazon is doing, but then all of the other retailers that are now trying to keep up. Uh, and so I think that you know where you see a situation now where sellers and vendors may feel like a little bit locked into the Amazon world. That's going to start expanding just because there's a lot of other retailers that are really trying to get their act together from a technology and in terms of just an ecosystem perspective. So we're certainly excited to see that, and I think that there's, there's better options, and it's going to be a, a really good growing sector for, for both third-party sellers as well as vendors. Do you think in 10 years Amazon will still be the big, the big gorilla? Or? So uh, purely speculative on this, but yes, I think so. I, I, uh, when we, we get to see the behind the scenes from a technology perspective, uh, of each of these various different retail platforms, and and while there's challenges with with Amazon, it is it is just light years ahead of uh, of, of the other platforms that are out there, at least any that are of any size uh, and significance. So I certainly think so, and they seem to be innovating at a very rapid pace. I mean, you go to the Amazon campus in Seattle, and you just walk around the campus, and you just get a sense for. The, the energy of innovation that is going on there, and, and it is a bunch of hardworking people who are very smart, uh, you know, sure they make mistakes, et cetera, but they are moving much faster, it feels like, than the rest of the industry. So that, that would be my speculation, but, but I could certainly be wrong. Right, and I remember people said the same thing about Yahoo, and I remember people said the same thing about eBay. I, I remember yep. I was saying that no one will ever catch eBay because they have the feedback and they have the system, and like, oh, Amazon is obliterating them, I think. Yeah, that's. I, I think that's that's a great point, and that's why it's a speculative, uh, you know, a comment. But it's like, you know, because anything can change. But what I think it was interesting. So my last startup, uh, we were the, the, we were located actually in Seattle, and we were located right where now the, the Amazon campus is. And so there were no Amazon uh, buildings or employees when we when we started our company. And five years later, after I, when I sold my company and left that area. Every single building around was was an Amazon building. We were completely surrounded, and that became the new Amazon campus. So we got to kind of 
see it. We, you know, we, you know, eat lunch every day with Amazon folks, and you just kind of like, you feel like you're in the middle of the Amazon campus. And and it was an interesting insight into the culture of Amazon. And I think that that has the potential to give them staying power because for a big company, they have their foot on the gas and are aggressive and working hard and moving forward uh, more effectively, I think, than most big companies that I see that get to that point in time. It's, it's easy to do that or easier to do that when you're a smaller company. When you get to the size that they are, to still have that just, you know, in the DNA of the culture is hard to do. And that's a, that's a special thing that they've, that they've captured. Yeah, they're, they're just amazing. But Really uh, ten, 10 years is like a thousand years in technology. It is, right? In technology, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. right. My background's in finance too, by the way, so let's talk about oh, it. Really? Yeah, I'm actually not, not in finance, but I worked for financial companies as a programmer, so. That's the insightful questions. That's good. That makes sense. <laughs> but okay, Keith, I really appreciate it, and uh, the great conversation, and we'll definitely be in touch. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ed. Bye-bye.